Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and uh, welcome to something a little bit special. For a little while I've been hinting at the next special thing that I wanted to put up on the channel and actually I was contemplating actually just completely replacing Project Zomboid with that special something. Well, you're looking at it. Cataclysm dark days ahead. If you don't know what Cataclysm DDA is, it is a roguelike that is true roguelike, turn-based, completely random, randomly generated world that is infinite uh, and heavy on the survival aspects, which we'll, we'll get into when we make our character. The reason I wanted to replace Zomboid with this is because in a lot of ways, maybe even more ways than you realize, Cataclysm DDA is the inspiration for a lot of hardcore survival games, especially those like Project Zomboid. The idea behind Cataclysm is very simple. You play a character that you make that gets dropped into a randomly generated world that is infinitely created and is, as you explore, the game doesn't forget parts of that world, it just, you, you, it remembers it. Um, and you are tasked with surviving. In that world, it is called Cataclysm, uh, Dark Days Ahead, because every single death doomsday scenario has taken place in the game. The dead are coming back to life with zombies. Dimensions to other worlds, portals rather, to other dimensions and other worlds have opened and creatures are invading the world. The gates of hell have opened and demons are wandering the world. And it's up to you to just try and survive and make it as far as you can. All the while, other human NPCs are around and can be interacted with or completely ignored or killed for their gear. There's a lot of simulation that happens in this game, and we're going to kind of talk about that as we make our characters. The reason it's been a while, uh, I've been talking about this for a while, but haven't really gone about it yet, is because Cataclysm is effing complicated. It's one of the deepest, most complicated simulation survival roguelikes out there, if not the most complicated one. I like to say Dwarf Fortress is to simulation games as Cataclysm is to roguelike games. It is that complex and that heavily uh, simulated. The game has also been in development for like 10 plus years and is free for anybody to go pick up and download as long as you can bear through the graphics of the game. It's an ASCII style game with tile sets and I will be using a tile set to make it more easy on my eyes and of course yours. Uh, I'm also interested to see how people will enjoy this. This is, this is, the reason I love these styles of games is because they are handmade to create emergent storytelling. My story will be different from even my next story and your story. The world that I create will be different than the world you create. And for many, many different reasons outside of the fact that the game is randomly generated. So I'm still very new to the game. I've only been researching and playing the game for about a week. I'm still very bad at it, but I have the basics under my grasp. And I feel like at the very least, it should be a fun couple of episodes if people are and end up watching it. That's the other thing too. Games like this, the audience is very niche. However, I feel like a channel like mine that has built itself on games like Project Zomboid and survival stuff at least has a little bit of an in when it comes to Cataclysm. You may enjoy watching this uh, as much as I enjoy playing it and I'm really enjoying it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a world and make a character and that'll probably be this episode. We'll kind of call it episode zero and it'll be a, it'll, it'll take a while. So you'll see what I mean. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually generate a brand new world for us to play in uh, and, and explore and enjoy. Uh, as you can see, if we go into the world, I've already created two worlds and I have a couple characters that I've been playing with as well as a tutorial world. We're not gonna worry about Sudbury or Stowe. We're actually just gonna make our own world uh, and uh, you'll see what I mean by how in-depth and complicated this game can be. So the first thing you want to do when you create a world is take a look at all the mod packs that are involved in Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Because this is an open source game and anybody can develop for it, Anybody can make mods. Um, while there is technically a quote unquote official developer that is updating the game and whatnot, this uh, mods can add a lot or take away a lot if that's what you want to do. We're gonna be adding a few mods, but not a ton. And I'm gonna show you which ones there are. So if we go over to the mod or load order, I'm gonna show you what I already have put into the game. So this is the Dark Days Ahead mod, it's core content. We leave that there. We have tall buildings, which makes buildings, uh, we can have like, lots and lots of uh, stories on our buildings, both Z level, which is like ground floor, as well as uh, higher levels uh, of buildings. Medieval and historic content, so stuff like um, chainmail armor and swords and shields can be found in the world. More survival tools, basically more stuff to make in the woods. If we decide we're gonna go into the forest and try and survive there for a few days, um, for whatever reason, this mod will allow us to have more 
tools that we can craft at our disposal. A little bit more realistic that way. That'll end our item edition mods. To so go into vehicle mods, we're going to have vehicle additions pack. So this is going to add basically more vehicles into the game. Boats for water. And folding parts pack. So this is stuff like small engines and solar panels. We can basically craft and create our own power sources to power cars and uh, several other parts of fold, uh, foldable and add-ons for foldable quarter boards and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, item additions. This is basically more guns and stuff that is near future. As you're going to realize Cataclysm can be as crazy or as realistic as you want it to be. I kind of like to sit somewhere in the middle, but this is going to be... Because of the way the, the world works and these secret labs in the world, and, and they part of the reason that the Cataclysm might even exist uh, is that these labs have been messing around with things. Uh, it makes sense that there will also be kind of near-future firearms that would exist in the world as well. That's what this adds. Filthy clothing. Basically, clothes worn by zombies are going to be dirty and can cause infection uh, if you get wounded with dirty clothing on from those zombies. It makes sense. More locations adds new Z-level buildings and dungeons. Uh, it's still a little unpolished, as it says there. Uh, before Generator World, you can remove subfolders and nix un uh, unwanted locations. I'm just going to leave that. I don't know what it entails, but for now, I'm going to leave it. Then, of course, is magical mods. And I'm only going to put in necromancy. Uh, there's... Again, it makes sense in the context of the world that there's this magic. If this portal's opening, magic makes sense to at least exist. Maybe it maybe the magic comes from where these uh, portals have been ripped open. Now magic exists in our world. So, people have been studying in the Cataclysm. If they want to live, maybe becoming a necromancer ain't a bad way to go about it. Rebalancing mods. Simple things. Um, it disables NPCs' needs. I'm actually going to turn this off. I'm going to remove this. We're not going to worry about that. I like NPCs that have... Uh, needs. I'm also going to remove simplified nutrition. Basically, the way the game simulates, it's, it's very complex. If I live an entire life eating just junk food, that in real life, that would affect me. In the game, it affects you. You could turn that off, but I'm going to actually keep it on. I like that idea. I like trying to take multivitamins if I need it. So those are the base ones that are kind of always uh, in the game. Next up, we're going to start adding some things. Uh, I'm not going to go through every one of these because it would take forever, but there's a few that I like to put in that are just really, really fun for me. Um, I think I already have more survival tools, so we don't need to, to add that. It's already in there. Um, medieval historic content is also within that. Uh, let's... Right? It's already in there? Yeah, it's already in there. We don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see. Crazy Cataclysm. Don't worry. We're not going to worry about that. More buildings, uh, which we don't have. Let's go ahead and throw more buildings in there. Wait. Did it go in? More buildings. There we go. Uh, more locations is always good, but that might be the one that's already in. No, I thought I had more locations in there. Where, Where is it? There it is, right there. Wait, where'd more buildings go? Oh, it's... It's loading weirdly because uh, it's not. it doesn't automatically put them together. So hopefully it won't matter too much. Tall buildings is already in. Urban development. Uh, hold it for suburban urban buildings. Yeah, why not? Let's put that in there as well. Uh, next up, the uh, one I like in here is tanks and other vehicles. It makes sense that when the world went to hell, the military would try and fight back. And there would be tanks and stuff maybe abandoned and laying around the world. I'm going to go ahead and put tanks in the game. Just because it makes sense. You couldn't get a tank up and running, but let's not pretend that I'll have... I'm not that good, basically. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Uh, no category. Mutation changes. Changes and rebalances mutations. I'm actually not going to worry about that right now. I feel like there were some other ones that I liked. Oh, well, because... We go blacklist. So we can blacklist some things. I'm not going to. Basically, this removes things that could make your game easier or make your game harder. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then there's some balancing things that I actually like to do. Um, one of them is... Um, where is it? Uh, stats through skills. So doing some research, basically the way it, the game works, and after playing it a little bit, is you have stats and you have skills. Stats are kind of like Dungeons and Dragons abilities. Strength, dex, con, intelligence, your base stats. Skills is stuff like um, being able, like a crafting skill. I, you can craft survival things. Um, or, or you're a martial artist and you can craft martial arts stuff. Or you can do martial arts abilities. It only makes sense that if I did more and more martial arts stuff, I would obviously get better at that skill. But I would also get stronger in turn, right? Well, in the base game, that's not true. However, with this mod, this 
correlates the skills to stats. So if I use martial arts a lot, I'm also going to bump up the stat eventually that correlates with that skill. So I'm gonna, I like putting this on as well. I don't like putting not zombie night vision on because it makes me want to die and then all the other stuff that I'm not going to worry about. So that's our world mods that we're going to put into this. The next thing is the world options. So this is where the depth and the complexity of just generating a world comes from. If you wanted to play a game where there's no cities, no zombies, no crazy stuff, and just you, NPCs that wander around, and wilderness, you could do that. You can modify the game so that it doesn't spawn portals and zombies, and it's just like a wilderness survival game. Or you can go the other way, where there's tons of enemies and tons of portals and tons of magic and all this other stuff in the game right here in the world option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with this just a little bit. The size of cities, I'm actually going to bump up the size of cities by two. I read that like between five and six is good and more realistic when it comes to city size. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. City spacing is how far apart cities will spawn. I'm actually going to leave this at its default. Uh, it's a number determining how far apart cities are. Warning, small numbers lead to very slow map gen. Just going to leave it at four. That's the default. Then we can obviously in increase in the enemy spawn rate as well as item spawn rate. I'm going to leave those as it is. NPC spawn rate scaling factor. I'm going to leave it alone. This is basically the density of dynamic NPC spawns. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Monster evolution scaling factor. It's a scaling factor that determines the time between monster upgrades. A higher number means slower evolution. Set 0 to 0, uh, 0, 0 to turn off monster upgrades. I'm going to leave that alone as well because I really don't know the difference. I have no idea if that should be messed with, um, and I've never seen anybody mess with it before, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Monster speed is default, monster resilience is default, but as you can see, you can make the monsters as weak or as strong as you want, and as slow or as fast as you want. Region type, we're just gonna leave it as default. I think there's only one right now. There used to be one, I don't know where it is anymore, but there used to be like a, a desert type that you can maybe mess with. Not gonna worry about it. Initial time starts at 8 in the morning. Initial season will start in spring. Season length, we'll leave it as it is. Uh, this is days, so every 14 uh, days the season will change over. Uh, spoiler, I haven't even made it through spring yet. Con uh, construction scaling, gonna leave it alone. Eternal season, no. Wander spawn. So this I've read is actually just really, really, really broken in that it's going to ruin your game, make it too tough. Basically, it simulates zombie hordes wandering around cities. However, zombies already go to noise and they already kind of wander towards noise and if they see something, they'll chase it. That already exists. So I don't understand what this does. Outside, it sounds like it makes like, it emulates zombie hordes. So it feels like there'd be more and more zombie hordes around. Not gonna worry about that. We can make zombies classic zombies, but I'm gonna leave the zombies as they are. So in the game, there's special types of zombies. Think uh, Left 4 Dead style, all kinds of different zombies that exist. That's what exists now. We could turn that off and just make zombies regular, boring old zombies. Not gonna worry about that. Surrounded start, hell no. Static NPCs, uh, this will basically will spawn a static NPC at the start of the game, requires world reset. I'm gonna leave that alone. Random NPCs. I don't know if I should mess with this or not. So basically, the game will randomly spawn NPCs during gameplay if I turn this to true. I gonna put that on? I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know if I turn that off, if anything will happen. But I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna turn that on for now. Mutations by radiation. It's true. Your character can mutate if he becomes heavily radiated. Mutations can be good, bad, or both. I'm going to leave that on. Experimental Z levels I'm going to leave off because it's still experimental, as it says. Basically, what this in the game, if you change floors, uh, all the other layers in the game, when you leave that layer, freeze until you go back to that layer. This basically allows the game to continue simulating on those layers while you're not on them. Um, however because it's still new, it actually lags the game and it's, it's not optimized yet. So for now, I'm gonna leave it on and then everything else is gonna be fine. So that's gonna be our world that we're gonna be playing in. Next, the name of the world, Chamberlain. Sure, why not? That's the name of the world that we're gonna be playing in. Done, not gonna worry about it. Boom, and are you sure you wanna f finalize it? Yes, there we go. So now we're gonna play a new game and I'm gonna show you how in-depth character creation is we're gonna go ahead and pick Chamberlain as our world and hit yes and it's gonna go ahead and load everything up or not oh there we go 
It's taken a while. I'm not quite sure why. I might want to delete the other two worlds. Maybe it's causing problems. Uh, okay. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is create, uh, or play our character. So, or make our character. So the first thing you got to do is kind of pick the start. What was our character doing before the cataclysm and what ended up happening uh, with our character at that start? Uh, these can be as hard, as easy, or as neutral as you want. Uh, some of the really tough ones are such stuff like Really Bad Day, where your character was drunk to the point of incapacitation, depressed, infected, surrounded by fire, naked, and sick with the flu. That's the start of the game, if that's what we choose. Not going to. Um, there's other simpler things, um, like Evacuee, which is a, a pretty pretty good start, where we basically got put into relative safely by the government, and we start there. Uh, there's Experiment, where your your whole life was being in the secret lab, and you could have been born there, and scientists have been experimenting on you. Not going to worry about that either. I like, for an early start, the one I play with is Sheltered. So Sheltered, if you look to the right-hand side, it tells you the choices of classes you can have if you pick this one. It limits it to like three or four different choices. But the, the basically the background is when the apocalypse happened, you were put into a shelter. Uh, you lived your life here, basically Fallout style, and um, you don't know much about the outside world. Supplies are running low, and you have to go out to the world to survive at this point. It's, it's very fall, Fallout, which I like kind of a lot. So that's going to be the starting scenario. Our character, when the Cataclysm all broke out, was whisked away by the government and put into safety for one reason or another. Probably because he knew somebody that worked at the government and was a friend with him and his friend was like, I got you, buddy. We're going to put you somewhere safe and that's where he's been for however long he's been there. Uh, next is our profession. So we have four choices for a profession here. Uh, ranging from, you know, relatively normal to very, very easy. Uh, on the right-hand side, basically dictates what each class starts with. So I like staying a survivor because it's realistic. I kind of like to pretend it's me that got whisked off. I just get some clothes that fit, a matchbook with 20 matches, a plastic bottle of clean water. We get two of those, a pocket knife, and nothing else. And it's up to us to do something else and, and, and kind of go from there. You got survivor, a sheltered survivor, which gives us all the clothes that fit, as well as a multi-tool and uh, some other skills, uh, like we're good at cooking, mechanics, first aid, electronics, fabrication, blah, 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 blah. And then all the way down to bionic prepper, which is like easy mode. Uh, we get a ton of stuff, uh, like our wrist ro mounted rocket launcher, and, and we're really good at a bunch of different skills. Uh, we get joint, like a bunch of bionic implants. Basically, we've been in this shelter for so long, that we were clearly in there with a scientist that helped us become like a bionic man, which is really, really cool. I'm going to stick with Survivor for now. The next thing we can do is work on our traits, stats, and skills. So at the top left hand side, you can see points left. 6 plus 0 plus 5 equals 11. We have 11 skill points to play with. Those skill points are a pool that is spent in both on traits, stats, and skills. It's not points that only get spent in traits. It gets split between the next three tabs. So we have to be smart. However, on the right-hand side, we can pick up some negative traits that give us a little bit more points to play with to give us a little bit more of an advantage. There's a few that I like to pick, and I'm going to pick those right now. Because I'm playing myself, I like to play uh, so at least so close to myself. I like to pick somebody that is similar to me. So I have a pretty addictive personality. I love video games. I love all kinds of stuff. And I get, I get, I don't want to say drugs. I don't do any drugs. However, it does translate into the game that way. Basically, if I like something, I kind of go heavy into it. It's kind of how I went with video games in the first place. So this is basically, it's easier for me to become addicted to substances and harder for you to rid yourself of those addictions. There are drugs in the game, painkillers and all kinds of things, and they are addictive and you can get addicted to them. Addictive personality means it's easier for me to get addicted to them. Um, other things, I have bad knees in real life. They crack, they ache, they, they creak sometimes. Uh, that's just how I've always been. Basically, I'm gonna pick that and when, what it means in the game is that moving over rough terrain like bushes, rocks, through windows is a little bit slower than it would be normally. I'm also kind of a smaller guy. I don't get into a lot of fights. So I'm going to take Glass Jaw, which uh, reduces my max HP by 20%. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Um, other things that I want to take, maybe not much else. Uh, you know what? I'm a pretty bad liar. 
And when we deal with NPCs, I'm gonna be more truthful, basically. I'm not good at lying, so if I wanted to lie to somebody, I'm not gonna be very good at it. So, we'll go ahead and take that. Now, you might see on the left-hand side, things were getting highlighted as I was taking these bad things. Basically, there's stuff that are the exact opposite of the negative traits that I took. So I can't take Addiction Resistant, I can't take Parkour Expert because my bad knees, I can't take Skilled Liar, and I can't take Tough because of my, bla uh, my glass jaw. So let's pick some uh, some decent stuff here. One of the ones I always take is night vision. Basically, better vision at night. And it makes sense because for me because I'm up late at night anyway. It just I'm, I'm up at night, so I have pretty good uh, night vision. Uh, other things are, let's see, let's see. Martial arts training. This is less about me. This is just a good thing for me to take. It'll let me start with a, uh, a few points in, in a martial arts skill of my choice. Um, there are a couple others I kind of like to take. Um, there is, is it Heavy Sleeper? What is it called? There's one that lets me fall asleep easily pretty much anywhere. Basically in the game, if I'm out in the woods and I have no sleeping bag, normally it's going to be very difficult for me to fall asleep. However, with this trait that I'm looking for, I can fall asleep pretty easily. Uh, or if I'm in an area where there's a lot of noise, that kind of thing. There it is. I think it's Accomplished Sleeper. You've always been able to fall asleep easily, even when sleeping in less than ideal circumstances. Done. Um, we may want to pick some other things, but for now, I'm going to leave... Oh, and infection resistant, just because getting bit by a zombie could be very dangerous. All right. Next, we'll go to stats. So these are our four base stats. Strength, I like to put a point in, not for the extra health, even though that's what it does, but extra carrying weight that we got. Dexterity, basically our chance to hit, throwing penalty per target, and our dodging ability. Intelligence, um, this is for crafting, installing bionics, interacting with NPCs, and perception, um, which is aiming penalty. I actually like doing 9889, uh, one in strength, one in perception, then base for dexterity and intelligence. And then we got skills, which I like to put some points into. So this is the stuff that will go up over time. Um, first aid is one that I really like. We've been in this shelter for so long, I can imagine we were taught some first aid. Um, we also, fabrication. Uh, some basic survival stuff, how to craft like a soda can stove kit, that kind of thing. I imagine I read a lot of survival books while living in this particular shelter that helped me get better at surviving out in the wild. Um, marksmanship is actually just generally good for firearms. I'm assuming, uh, that, you know, I, I practiced some shooting and stuff for whoever was with me in the shelter. We, we kind of maybe shot BB guns and or, or, or rifles just for fun and for practicing. So I'm going to take one of those. I'm going to take two in dodging, uh, so our ability to dodge is a little bit better than normal. And we have two more points to play with. It's tempting to go for mechanics. Mechanics is pretty useful, I'm, I'm told, though I haven't really been using it very much. As well as cooking. Hmm. I don't know if I want to do more of this. Or unarmed combat. Yeah, let's go one in unarmed combat. And we'll go one in mechanics just to be safe. And that's going to be our character. There we go. Our, our good friend, uh, we haven't named him. This is his life. This is what he has become. Uh, we'll go to description now, and we're going to name him. I don't want to name him Mathis, though. I want to name him something else. You know what? It's not very Ryan-like, but this is Ryan. This is Northern Lion. We're going to play him, and hopefully he'll survive longer than normal. He's a sheltered survivor with some decent skills. Uh, and he's, uh, you know, got bad knees and a glass jaw, but other than that, you know, he's pretty good. Um, we can also go ahead and save this as a template by hitting exclamation mark. And this will be typical survivor template. This will be kind of like my go-to, uh, survivor, um, whatnot. And that's it. That's, that's how you create a world in a game, uh, a world in a character, rather, in this game. So we hit tab, and then we hit yes, and then we pick our, our, our martial arts. I just gonna tell you right now, I like karate. Basically, what this means is a successful hit allows you to uh, you an extra dodge and two extra blocks on the following round. It just seems really, really good. Other things like judo, where if you get thrown to the ground, you can get up for free. That kind of thing. I'm not gonna worry about. It. I'm gonna take karate. Boom, and there's our character. But this is episode zero. I want to put this up, and I'm gonna do one real episode after this, maybe tomorrow or the next day. I'm more interested to see what people are thinking, if this is something people are interested in watching. In the next episode, I'm going to go over the UI and uh, tell you what, what it all means, uh, as well as uh, fumble around a bit and kind of get our first day in this world playing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm excited. I hope you are excited as well. Uh, and uh, 
we'll, we'll be checking out Cataclysm Dark Days ahead in the next few days. I, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.